Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History. Now, we've been going through Unit 9 of the AP World History Curriculum and trying to understand the massive implications of globalization after 1900. And so far, we've dealt with new technologies and the spread of disease. So in this video, it's time to talk about the effects of technology on the environment. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked greenhouse gas style, well, then let's get to it. So in this video, let's focus our efforts with our learning objective, and it is this. Explain the causes and effects of environmental changes in the period 1900 to the present. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Now first let's set the stage and talk about the environmental problems the world was dealing with after 1900. First you have deforestation. Because of the increased need for food in the world that meant that more and more land needed to be devoted to agriculture and if you need more land to plant stuff then you got to cut all them trees down. A second environmental problem after 1900 was desertification. This is a process by which fertile land becomes desert-like because of the aforementioned deforestation and other problems like drought and harmful agricultural techniques. And when the land becomes desertified it's not much good for plants planting crops to feed the world's mouth holes. The third environmental problem during this period was a decline in air quality. Because of the massive amounts of industrial byproducts being released into the air, you got devastating events like the Great Smog in London in 1952, in which industrial coal emissions combined with fog to create a poisonous smog that covered the city for five days, killing somewhere between 10,000 and 12,000 people and making about 100,000 very ill. So yeah, air quality was kind of a problem after 1900. The fourth environmental problem after 1900 was increased pressure on the world's fresh water supply, on which, more in a moment. And the fifth problem was an increase in global temperature, on which, also more in a moment. Okay, so clearly the world is contending with some massive environmental issues after 1900, and our task is to try to figure out the causes of those problems and their effects. So let's start with causes. Cause number one is globalization and industrialization. As industry spread, especially among developing nations, more energy resources were in demand, and as industrialization spread to these places, the standard of living rose for some, especially the newly formed middle class. And with the rise of the middle class in developing nations comes the increased demand for industrial goods, which puts further strain on the environment. Cause number two is population growth and urbanization. In 1900, the world's population was about 1.5 billion, and by 2000, it was just over 6 billion. And if you got more people, that means you got more mouth holes to feed. And as I mentioned before, that scenario puts a strain on our environmental resources. Additionally, by this period, the majority of the world's population lived in cities, and that has some serious environmental consequences of its own. City dwellers tend to produce a lot more waste than their rural counterparts. Additionally, when people live in cities, they are physically separated from the act of food production. Urbanites just walk into a grocery store and buy all the food that they need and they have no sense of what it takes or the resources required to produce all that food. And that gap in knowledge has a way of increasing demand without respect to the cost of supply. Okay, so those are a few of the main causes of environmental changes. Now let's turn the corner and talk about some of the major effects. First, with the increasing population of the world, that naturally means that there's an increased competition for scarce non-renewable resources. A major example here is oil, and this of course is a non-renewable resource, but since since the Industrial Revolution got us addicted to oil, about half the world's oil has been used up. It's like my grandpappy always used to say, Son, this world is so hungry for oil, it could eat the north end of a southbound polecat. Thanks, grandpappy. Illuminating as always. Another non-renewable resource being depleted by increased competition is fresh water. And you might be thinking, last time I checked, there was a metric buttload of water on planet Earth. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that only about 3% of that water is usable by human beings, and there has been a rising demand for that 3%. Because there are more mouth holes to feed, the majority of fresh water consumption goes towards crops. And as the population grows, more water will be needed to feed them. Additionally, many developing nations have the added problem of finding access to clean water for their population. The World Health Organization estimates that by 2025, half the world's population will lack clean drinking water. Now, the second big effect of environmental changes after 1900 is climate change. With the rise of industrialization, factories, automobiles, airplanes, all of these things have been releasing pollutants into the air. The big culprit here is carbon dioxide emissions. Now, CO2 and other greenhouse gases are released, and then they combine with the atmosphere to prevent the Earth's heat from escaping. And this can have potentially disastrous consequences, from melting ice caps, rising sea levels, further desertification of farmland, and on and on. So in order to address this problem, much of the world has come together in order to solve it. For example, in 1997, the Kyoto Protocol was established, which was an international agreement to reduce carbon emissions. And this regulatory burden was placed squarely on developed nations who could afford to spend extra to curb their emissions. Developing nations, on the other hand, were saddled with far less of a regulatory requirement. And conspicuously absent from the signers of the protocol is the United States. Then in 2015, along these same lines, many nations 
agreed to the Paris Agreement. Its aim was to legally bind member countries to no more than a 2% increase in global temperature compared to previous industrial levels. This time, the United States did sign, but in 2017, President Trump withdrew the United States from the agreement. But now, as I record this, the new President Joe Biden is working to rejoin the agreement. The point is this, the world after 1900 has faced some serious environmental problems, and with the global population growing, these problems will only continue. And so in a globalized world, globalized solutions are necessary. Well, all right, that's what you need to know about Unit 9, Topic 3 of the AP World History Curriculum. If you need help getting an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May, then click right here in the review packet. If you want to send me the signal to keep making these videos for you, then by all means, subscribe, and I shall oblige. I'm Lur out.